Hello everyone and welcome back. Today we're going to be talking about an amazing OSINT tool called Maltego. This tool is used by OSINT professionals and hackers around the world and it has gained popularity as well as status in the community. I'm not going to cover the installation as I consider that to be unnecessary since it's really easy and described on the webpage. And also I think it's installed on Kali by default. So let's run Maltego so I can show you what it can do. First thing we can see is the interface which looks a little scary and complicated but don't worry, it's easy to use. Let's describe its parts. On the left we have the news, you can ignore that because we don't really need that right now. On the top there's a toolbar which we'll come to later in the video. In the middle right here we have the Maltego Transforms hub. Here we can install additions, so let's call them extensions of sorts. I've installed standard machines by Maltego for myself and I recommend it for you too. It is absolutely free. If you uncheck the free tick you can see that there's a bunch more transforms that we could use. Imagine transforms with special functions that extract data or stuff like that. It's kind of like extensions or add-ons. On the top left the only thing we should care about is the menu button showing you settings and similar, as well as the new project button which runs Maltego workspace. In this workspace when we run it we can see a bit of a confusing interface, but again as I said don't worry, on the left we have the entity palette, these are the things that we can add and put some data in them, so like add a person and then add the name and the last name as your data, and then Maltego can run transforms on this based on that data, if we right click on it on the graph it can extract even more data. As you can see I added a person and you can see all sorts of transforms that are available to us for this type. For example, from name to an email address, we can extract that, that's really useful for us. On this side we have the detail view which will allow us to see the information, uh, the type of information and where it comes from. So this is going to be useful for you when you're dealing with a bunch of transforms and you're not sure where the data came from and is it accurate, so we can delete the extra data that we don't need. We don't have to do this right now uh, because we manually added this name. On the right we have a property view where we can change information and see additional stuff that's not visible on the graph by default. We have an option to change this information if we like. We can also add more stuff so I can show you how the overview works. On the top right you can see the nodes and you can use your mouse to move around. It's going to be easier to navigate if you have a lot of data, which you will in most of investigations with Maltego. There is also different types of layouts that rearrange your data. Also another thing to mention is the output field right here. It shows us the description of the transforms running as well as the additional information. Once we make our own transforms it will output data here or on the screen depending on how you make the transforms. You can make them according to Maltego which will include XML and stuff like that but we'll get to that later. We don't really need to do that, we can just use a simple Python script. As a matter of fact I've made uh, one transform for this video which is uh, an example of a dataset searcher. Let's say you have multiple datasets and you're searching them with Python and you just want to include that Python script to print out everything. We can do that and it will output information right here but we'll get to that later. Now let's take a look at the toolbar. First we have zoom options for our graph, nothing special here, and then we have a really important button called the entity selection that when clicked changes to link selection. Now this is important because I get confused sometimes when the arrows start popping out of my entities, so make sure that the entity selection is selected. This is for selecting entities like a person and stuff like that, and link selection is more like uh, for linking and adding relationships in between them. Let me show you an example of linking, so let's manually add a person as well as their alias. Now we can link those together and add a label on it. If you watched the Mr. Robot you can let me know in the comments, so I use this example for linking. You can already see how information gathering and OSINT can be very powerful represented here. It's pretty cool and very useful. Next interesting thing we have here on the toolbar is the privacy mode, uh, but sadly it isn't perfect so you shouldn't really feel safe using it the stealth mode because it really isn't that stealthy. Even Maltego doesn't really recommend it as a perfectly safe thing. Next we have the view where we can make our graphs look different. As you can see at the left part it's showing us the same thing that the little toolbar thing is showing us right here, so it's just about how uh, they're going to be positioned and what they're going to look like. Next we have entities, an example of an entity is a person as I said, or an email or a phone number. Here you can add new entities and manage manage existing ones. If we look at the settings of the Twitter's entity, you can see that we can change some information, icons and additional properties. And it will also be visible on the graph as well, but not all of the information, so this is why we can look at the property view for additional information. Next we have collections, but this isn't something that interests us right now. You can use the tutorial if you're curious, it's right here. Basically you can group stuff with this. Next we have the transforms tab, which gives you options of adding new transforms, as well as modifying existing ones. If we look into the transform manager and look up profiler, you can see that I added my own transform. I'm going to explain this later. This is just a Python script that prints out text. A very simple example that's used to represent a Python dataset searcher. As you can see it needs the program to run the script with. In our case it's Python 3 and then the name of our script and then the directory where the script is. So this is really important so 
that it can run it normally. Next we have the machines used for automating and running a bit more complex tasks at once. You can see that I have some of them installed and if we take a look into the code of one of them you'll see the introduction and it will show you a display name and similar and you'll see the start of the function where it runs specific transforms. We also have collaboration tab which isn't interesting to us right now. We have import and export tab for importing data and exporting it and lastly we have the windows tab which allows us to enable windows we accidentally disable for example and navigate easier. As you can see if I close the output section I can turn it back on by clicking here. Now let's set a domain by dragging it and we can change it in the property view into my website. And next let me show you how transforms work. Right click on it and run all transforms. Click OK at this prompt because it's whatever and you can see that the output is showing results and so is the graph. And as you can see we just got a bunch of information based on one domain. So if you look into the output you can see the progress and the path Multigo took in his transforms to get to our information. We can see name server, wayback machine which shows previous versions of the site, other websites, location and a bunch more information. If I click on datpackage.com as an example on the right you can see where the data was extracted from as well as the full URL. This could be useful for looking for previous versions of the site or something similar because we need the source and we can also make sure that we remove all the unnecessary sources and all the unnecessary information. So now let's clear everything up and I'll show you more. Add a person entity. If we run transforms on this person we will find a bunch of information. Now of course some of this information is useless to us because it isn't directly linked to the person we are looking for and we can eliminate the unnecessary stuff just by deleting it. This is often done in investigations since the system can't perfectly know what info belongs to who. Another thing we can do is when we find the number of a random person we can extract additional information from it like a location of the cell tower, country, communications provider it's using and similar. Also yes this number is randomly picked. Next cool thing you might find useful is the fact that Multigo predicts the data type. So if I give it data just by copying and pasting it inside it will predict what's a person, what's a phone number and what's a website. It can of course do the same thing with the bigger data sets so you can import a bunch of stuff. Now let's take a look at this person I added. This is the most common uh, first name and last name in Croatia so I just added this. And let's double click on the person. Here we can add photos. I don't have a photo of a male right now but I do have a randomly generated AI photo of a female so we can put this and change the name to uh, a female name. Or we can just delete the photo and bring back the name to the male name. The site I use is this person doesn't exist, you can use it yourself, it generates a random face that doesn't exist. So let's leave it like this because my custom made local transform which I was talking about the profiler is gonna respond to this once we run the transforms because it's gonna find this person in it. It looks like Ivan was born in Berlin in 1990 and he worked at Malwaresoft. And now let me show you how to add your own transform. It is really easy, I promise. All you need is some basic coding in Python, for example. If I go to Transforms Manager, you can see my profiler here. And you can see that Multigo asked me for only three things. The command line, which is the Python 3 program. You can use the user bin Python 3. The command parameter, which is the name of your script. And the working directory, so the directory where the Python script is. So Multigo can navigate and run the program from it. This is basically all you need. That and the title of the transform. Make sure that these are correct though because otherwise it's not gonna work. I'm gonna show you what the script that I was talking about looks like so let's look into it. As you can see I'm taking in the system arguments so that means the data is going to be provided in the pattern python name of the script argument 1 which is the name and argument 2 which is the last name. So then we're fixing up the string and splitting it by person.full name. We're doing this because of Multigo because Multigo gives us way more than just the name and the last name when we're forwarding the entity of a person. And so we have to split it and fix all the extra information. Usually this kind of stuff will be handled by using Multigo's module for Python. But now we're looking at a simpler solution. Also the one that doesn't include XML and stuff like that. Then we have to clear up some spaces because my if statements will not figure out the name inside of the whole string for my data sets if we have an extra space. And printing out the status so we know that the system args went in right. And lastly we're looking up that query which is Ivan Horvat and we're looking at our data sets to see if there's any match for Ivan Horvat in them. So basically if we look up Ivan Horvat we will get his info which we did is that he lived in Berlin in 1990 and he worked for Malwaresoft. And if we look up Maya Horvat we will get her info. And you can of course add more data sets and checks. Also make sure you sanitize Multigo's input like I did with the person full name thing. You can use better ways if this confuses you. Multigo has everything specified and there's module for Python as I mentioned.
And when you click on new local transfer, Maltigo is going to ask you some information. All you have to do is type in the uh, title, just some random information and select the entity type right here, which we can't really find. So we're just going to use Maltigo AS. Uh, this doesn't really matter. I think you can use this about anything because it just runs the script. It doesn't go into the graph anyways. If it does go into the graph, maybe you'll consider putting something more precise here. Then you get the screen I mentioned earlier with uh, Python 3 as the first argument, the script name as the second and the working directory as the third. And that's it. You've added your own new transform. This could be very useful. You can already imagine that huge projects that you can work on. You can install a bunch of extensions and a bunch of machines and you can add a bunch of your scripts. So this can be a powerful OSINT tool and it also has a visual representation which is impressive. So it can generate reports that look really cool. So anyways, that's it for today. I hope you learned something useful and I hope you liked Maltigo. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments and thank you so much for watching and have a nice day.